and the facilities that they're just not there to support what represents a huge increase in their population? Well, Sarah, what I see, and actually it's one of the reasons I'm in Kildare today as well, what I see an awful lot, and it doesn't make the headlines, it doesn't make the news, we, we have about 200 uh, accommodation centres open across the country uh, and they have, by and large, worked very well and the communities living around them have engaged exceptionally well. Also in cases where initially there's been a lot of reticence, there's been a lot of fear, there's been a lot of misinformation, a lot of these communities have turned around when they've had the opportunity to meet the people, when they've had the opportunity to see what the actual situation is as well. And I suppose when we've had the opportunity to explain in more detail uh, what the reality of the situation is. Mm-hmm. I would be very hopeful that this would be the case here as well with McGrana House. OK, but I, I was looking at uh, reports from that meeting that happened in Kilmele over the weekend and it was described as a heated meeting. Uh, people said they would do everything in their power to stop this um, accommodation from being opened. But politicians spoke at that meeting too and your own party colleague, Roisin Garvey, said that the minister should reconsider the decision. Fianna Fáil Senator Timmy Dooley said it's one of the worst options he's seen from a road safety and services point of view. Should they be leaving people in any doubt about their commitment and the government's commitment to house refugees? Well, I think a lot of what was said was on the basis of incorrect information in terms of the fire search and the sewage situation. So I think that has to be kept into account there. Look, Claire, there's no perfect locations. And, and I, I would be dealing with various communities that have said, is there not somewhere better to, to house people? At, at the moment, we're looking at everything viable in terms of giving people safety and giving people shelter. I would say this was previously a hotel as well. So it is... And a, and a holiday home. So they were configured to actually accommodate people. We've been looking at situations where, where we're repurposing office blocks as well. And, and in many respects, that's far from ideal too. But what we have to provide to people is safety and shelter. Uh, and we're doing that the best we can. And we're easing into that on accommodated figure substantially this week. Now so, well. so what do you say to people who are blocking the entrance with their tractors and blocking both ends of that road overnight and this morning? Look, I can understand uh, with the information that they were acting on uh, why they might have done that. Uh, but I, I suppose I'm coming on this morning as well just to clarify that the fire search situation and the sewage situation in the three buildings that the people are staying in is all up to standard and it's all, all up to requirements as well. That seems to have been the main issue. I uh, just want to put people at ease that that's the case uh, and, and it's a safe. So, so you, you, you ex- there is a transport connection as okay. well. Okay, so you expect after those clarifications this morning that all of those people will stand down? I, I, I would hope so. I don't know. There may be more questions. We will we be happy to take more questions about the situation as well. Uh, there's many cases where we have accommodation opened and the community goes, is over and back to us in terms of clarifying what the supports will be, um, how the place will be run. And, you know, we can do that once we have you know, free and easy access and, and the people living there have free and easy access to it as well. Okay. So we, we can continue to engage, but, uh, you know, restrictions on, on allowing people in and out, I would ask that they would be stood down today. Minister of State Joe O'Brien, thank you for joining us on the programme this morning. Now, coming up next, we'll speak to the Children's Ombudsman. Text 51551. Today with Claire Byrne on RTE Radio 1. Brian, thank you very much. Now, let's go back to Inch in County Clare, where the arrival of 34 asylum seekers at McGowna House has led to anger and opposition from some local people. Our reporter, John Cook, is there this morning. So, John, what's been happening in the last hour since we spoke? Well, Clare, the uh, standoff, I suppose, continues. Some of the blockade partially removed in the last while. The tractors removed from one of the main entrances to the hotel at McGowna House and the holiday chalets beside it because locals here said they wanted to make it clear that the asylum-seeking men they see in front of them with their bags of uh, clothing and their suitcases are not being blocked from leaving the premises. There was some confusion when a shuttle bus arrived earlier on and Minister Joe O'Brien mentioned this to you. He said there would be transport services presided each day um, to um, 
to facilitate people getting to services like in NS8 kilometres away. That bus arrived, but the people were not allowed to leave. Now, that wasn't a decision taken by any locals. They weren't blocked from leaving. Whatever the confusion was, it would seem management didn't allow the men to leave. And it may have been because some people said they would not be allowed back in. Some people were heard to say that as the bus arrived. So the locals here want to make it very clear they're not blocking anyone from leaving. They are still blocking the road to McGowan House, though, so no one else is coming in. And the tractor has been moved back from one of the entrances, as I said, but they remain at others and silage bales remain at others as well, blocking entrances. In the last while as well, uh, a number of local people arrived to bring uh, some cakes. I understand there were chocolate brownies to some of the men inside uh, to make them feel welcome, they said, and to see if they were OK. And among them was Maria Karen Walsh. She's from Bell Harbour. That's in the Burren area of North Clare. And uh, she spoke uh, to the local people outside the gate, appealing them, appealing to them uh, to welcome the asylum seekers here. She said the men were afraid as she spoke uh, to some of the protesters here, including John O'Malley. So we can hear what Maria had to say. They said they were afraid Sorry. of the fires. Afraid of the tyres. They should be more afraid of the accommodation they've been put into. And we're here because we heard on the radio this morning what was going on and we were concerned. I've just talked with these men today and I'm absolutely shocked that they are afraid to walk out with me. I invited them to link my arms and they said they were too afraid. I asked all of them. Can, well, they were can, so can, afraid. Can you imagine how shocked we were when they were landing top of us without no communication or, or no consultation at all? You come down here from Bell Harbour. If they were going into above in Bell Harbour, how would you feel? I would welcome them. You would, yeah, you would. I would, of course, yeah, yeah. because well, we are bus, working. Get, get a bus and bring them to Bell Harbour, so. Because there's nowhere for them to no, stay. No, of course, there's nowhere here either. But that's not what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with fear. These people have come Where's from war-torn country. Where's the fear coming from? Where's the fear coming from? They wouldn't walk out the that's gate. Not, huh? They asked us could they walk down the road, and we told them, no problem in the world, they can walk down the road. Go over and ask them. We told them, we, we told them we'd get them a bus to, into Innes if they wanted it. We'll do whatever they want to go. They can walk down the road. There's no one stopping them going anywhere. Maria, do you work with refugees or asylum seekers? Tell me your role here, please. So, um, I'm in the voluntary capacity as an artist, um, but I volunteer with uh, Falcha Isjok. We've been working with the Ukrainians uh-huh. for the last year. I just want to welcome people who are from a terrible background, who've had so much trauma. We don't want to add to any more trauma. I understand housing situation isn't ideal, but when you hear somebody say they're delighted to have peace that's the priority it's just a room minister joe o'brien referred to how many refugees and asylum seekers have come to county clare and how welcoming this county has been because it does have a very high number of refugees and asylum seekers now proportionate to other counties is it just that it's too much for locals here now or what do you think i absolutely cannot speak on that behalf because we're part of people who welcome people here it's a huge county as you can see there are lots of fields there are lots of buildings empty our concern is to say everybody is welcome Right, lots happening there this morning, John. And you've been speaking to others there in the last couple of minutes. I have, Claire, because um, there have been uh, a lot of men coming out closer to the wall to speak. I, I should point out, I did ask um, the proprietor here to speak earlier today. I was asked to leave the premises, but I stayed outside uh, the wall and outside the hotel and these three holiday chalets uh, that Minister Joe O'Brien referred to. He said that while, yes, locals have concerns about the fire uh, safety and sewerage at the hotel, the intended use was these three holiday chalets. Now, Claire, just to point out, they are three three-bedroom holiday cottages and 33 men slept in them last night. Locals believe that 69 were to come if a second bus had been let in. So some of these men, as I said to you, brought out their luggage and their shopping bags full of clothes. Quite a a, a striking sight in itself to see everybody's belongings gathered up in shopping bags here because I understand some of the men want to leave while others say they want to stay because they just want to seek asylum in Ireland and they'll stay wherever they have to after leaving a City West hotel in Dublin yesterday. Uh, one man asked me what was a silage bale. He was pointing at it, blocking the gate, and he said it was only for animals. Why was it put there? But we know that locals have put the silage bales there to block gateways. Another man asked me to come inside the holiday chalets to see the conditions they had slept in because he described them as bad. He wouldn't speak to me any further, uh, and I couldn't access the property. Uh, as of yet, anyway, I will ask again. One man on behalf of other asylum seekers did speak. He is Sultan Mohammed from Afghanistan, and he was accompanied by a representative of management of this facility. She's Salman Aklam. She told me she's the manager of CRM Properties. They have other facilities, she said, for refugees in Cork. And they both spoke to me, starting, and to other media who have gathered here, starting with Sultan Mohammed from Afghanistan. Yeah, I'm feeling really good here. It's a safe area, but uh, uh, everything will be good for uh, uh, next after a few days. Where were you living until now? When did you come to Ireland? Came uh, Ireland five months ago. And where and have where you been living since? Us? For uh, and city. 
Okay, City West Hotel in Dublin. Yeah, in Dublin. And how did you feel about coming here last night and seeing the blockades? Yeah, it's uh, a little difficult, but we will uh, feeling good next time. Yeah. Are there 34 men here in these three holiday chalets, these small houses behind us? 33, you say, yeah, yeah. and they are in these three holiday cottages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many people would normally sleep in a holiday cottage like this? How many bedrooms? Uh, three bedrooms. There is four people, three people and four. Yeah, we have beds, yeah. Bed, uh, is it okay? Uh, yeah, it's bed. okay. It's okay. We are happy, so happy here, yeah. You... The local people feel this is not suitable, a place for you to live or to stay, and they weren't consulted or told you were coming. What do you say to that? Yeah, you know, we are feeling here, uh, here good if they say anything, so if I like this place, so no one... Yeah, we're going to help them uh, yeah. to find jobs after they are allowed to work after six yeah, months. They, 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 they do don't... English courses and they try to integrate uh -huh. good in society. Is there a division now among the men here? Because everybody came out with suitcases and shopping bags full of their clothes. Do some people want to leave? Yeah, this is different people. But if someone don't like, it's not related to me. I like, I will live here. Okay. If anyone don't like... So, you don't want to go back to City West or to Dublin? Uh, yeah. They wait as well, the decision from my past. They don't know if they are allowed to stay here or not. Yeah. John, uh, earlier we heard the protesters telling you that they were concerned that there was no fire safety cert for the hotel building itself and that there were sewage issues. Now, when we had Minister O'Brien on, he clarified, he said, look, we're not using the hotel building, we're using the chalets, as, as you have explained to us as well. How have the protesters reacted to that clarification? The issue of fire safety and sewage was about the hotel, as you mentioned, and it's why locals here were told this property would not be used for refugee accommodation, hence some of their frustration and anger uh, over the last few days to find out that it was going to be used for international protection asylum, uh, asylum seekers and inter international protection applicants. Within the past few moments, some of the protesters have said to me uh, that they still don't accept that three holiday chalets, three bedroom, three three bedroom properties are suitable for 34 men, let alone 69 men, as they believed were coming last night before their blockade uh, took place after the first bus arrived. They say it's simply not suitable. They say their issues weren't just about sewage and fire safety. It's about remoteness. It's about lack of services, isolation. And it's not suitable. And they, within the past few moments, have said they would like Minister Joe O'Brien to come here, to speak to them, to see these three holiday chalets where 33 men slept last night and vouch for their safety and suitability himself. For now, they say their blockade, their protests will continue and could continue for the long term. All right. Well, John, we'll stay in touch with you. And if there are any developments before we get to 12 o'clock, we'll hear from you again, no doubt. Email todaycb at rte.ie. Now, John Cook, our reporter, is back on the line from Inch in County Clare, where that protest has been taking place after the arrival of some asylum seekers last night. John, what's the latest? Well, I told you, Claire, earlier, as we spoke to some of the asylum seekers, there seems to be division among the 33 men who stayed in these three holiday cottages last night. Some saying they wanted to stay, some saying they wanted to leave and go back to Dublin. They'd come from the City West Hotel. After I spoke to you last, they went inside for quite some time. Now some have arrived again with their bags and in the last few minutes have left the property. Locals have made it very clear they were not blocking anyone from leaving. Those four men have now carried shopping bags full of their clothes down this winding road onto the main Ennis Kilmaley Road, eight kilometres from Ennis here. They told me they didn't speak English, but one of them said to me simply, we're going back to City West. Okay. This is a very windy, remote road. There are four men now walking along that road with all their worldly belongings, perhaps, in those shopping bags. Whether others follow remains to be seen. Oh.